So now we're going to start step three. We need to add more highlight to our sky, which is going to be our yellows and more whites to give it a more dynamic feeling. Because right now it does have nice highlights and lowlights within our sky, but you're not seeing the brightness and vibrancy that I'm, I'm wanting to portray. We're also going to work on our waves in our water and the beginnings of our foreground to bring out the depth of our water, our land, and the beginnings of our stairs. First color I'm going to use is lemon yellow. This is going to add more highlights to our sky. And once again, I'll use my fan brush. And we'll go with the, the smaller one like we were using. I'm covering the whole fan brush with yellow instead of just the corner this time because I'm going to bring a, a lot of yellow within my sky. And I want to centralize my yellow <clears throat> to one particular, not one particular area, but a general zone so it's not bursting out the whole thing. I'm just actually trying to centralize it so that when I actually do put in my stairs, it looks like the yellow is, is, is guiding it. So again, you want to apply the, the paint pretty loosely. No particular form that needs to be put into place. But again, I'm, I'm not trying to cover the whole painting with the yellow. But I want it to be pronounced pretty well. And again, taking my titanium white and adding highlights to that paint that I just applied to one, fill it down a bit, and two, give it a, a, a feel of unity with the rest of the clouds. here is not to completely cover what we did previously but to add enough paint so that it works with what is already there <clears throat> giving it more depth now you don't actually need a um, another fan brush to to blend in the color that you're looking for I'm going to use a regular um, simple brush, number two, nothing big, just very simple. And I'll use that to blend in what I already have here. So it not so much stands out from the rest of the clouds, but it looks like it's a continually part of the clouds that were already there. That looks pretty good. Now I think we can add a few waves to our water. But first, I think I should add a few rock formations so that it gives it a little bit of a different feel. And this is burnt umber. often used as bases for mountains and rock formations and things of that nature. Oh, a simple rule when you're putting down formations of any sort. Um, odd numbers look better and work better than even numbers. Even numbers tend to be a little bit more rounded, so they do work in some sense. But when you're putting together paintings, for some particular reason, odds look better and aesthetically feel better. So now that we know where our simple rock formations are going to be, I want to start on the sand area before I actually put in my waves in the water. And this is a yellow ochre. Simple everyday round tip brush, longer and extended than normal. 
and this area I wanted to make into a sand barge so that the green looks like it's actually on a cliff or lifted above this. And this is another reason why I think painting is easy. Because just by adding a simple change of color, it changed the depth and feel of um, the painting already. We'll come back to our yellow ochre because it's, it'll be a good color as our base for um, <clears throat> our stairway. But right now I want to add a few waves. Again, taking my palette knife. Um, using a palette knife to make waves is the easiest way to do it. It gives you a nice, even, straight line and one which you can manipulate pretty easily once the paint is applied to the canvas. What you generally want to do is just add it to, to the edge. Yes, you can see that I got a little bit more than I don't normally want to, but since I'm right-handed for this painting, I'll be pulling this way. Either use your fan brush or your pointed uh, regular simple paint brush to do this. that look like they're spraying. Instead of smearing, it's a light tapping. Giving it the slight illusion that the water is fading in and ebbing and flowing like it naturally does. Again, taking your blue, and this is cerulean blue hue. I know I forgot to mention that before, but it's, I'm just reusing the paint that I've already used before, just so I can properly create the depth of it. And I'm grabbing a thinner palette knife, one with a sharper edge. This is the third palette knife that you've seen. Here's the first one, here's the second one. Here's the third one. Now I think we can actually move on to the base coat of our stairway. It's a little funky right now, but this is just a base coat so I can get the general idea of how the stairs will be and where they will be in regards to the painting. When you're <clears throat> painting an edge, if you give a slight twist, 
to your brush, you'll get a sharper edge than normal. But these are just little clues that you pick up as you paint. Each painter is different and has a different unique style of how they like to apply paint to, to canvas. And that's just something that I've learned over the years. Now with that, step three is finished. You can see that I've added quite a bit of detailing, um, a little bit of yellow to my sky so that you can see that it, it, it brings out even more detail and depth to my, my general area. Um, I've added um, waves to my water so that it doesn't just look all stagnant. It looks like it actually is moving. Uh, added a few rocks formations to the bottom corner where um, the cliff is and within the water so that you can see the, the difference in depth. I will add more detail to that as well and next time. I've added my base line of where I'm going to do my actual staircase so that you can see where I'm going to put the stairs for the title of the game.